first of all, I guess the the first thing that I haven't said on stream, I have it in the Discord. Um, but because of the abundance of background noise, or uh, most of the time, or um, say uh, I can't make noise at night. Uh, stuff like that, I have been streaming with no microphone um, for the past three streams, I think. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that since I, I haven't been able to stream as much as I want to. Um, but if I do that, I, I, I have more I, I have more chance to stream, at least. Um... So, first of all, um, getting to actually why, um, so over the past few days, I have been sort of, um, reifying some features that I, I've always, I've been, I've had them on the back burner since, um, I knew, for the most part, how they would work, um, uh, well, I should say for, for switch statements and choice statements, I, I knew how I would want them to work. I didn't exactly have a, a syntax, obviously, um, preliminarily, I, um, has seen had C's syntax in mind, but that wasn't really, um, that just because I didn't come up with a syntax, uh, at that point. Um, but, I have come up with a, a syntax for them that will make them, um, not only more similar to if statements, because, of course, um, when you think about it, the function between switch and choice statements, um, I should say, choice statements um, in Y are basically switch statements that don't have fall-through. Um, they're intended for if you have a definite, um, you know, number of cases where you only want one of them. And switch statements, of course, have fall-through. Um, if you, if you need multiple things to happen on, um, uh, you know, if you need to do one thing for one, uh, like case two, say, but you also need to fall through to case three, uh, and do whatever's in there. Um, I added a choice statement just because I, I think, at least for the most part, uh, mutually exclusive paths are, um, more common, at least to me. Um, but switch statements, of course, do have their place. Um, so, for switch and choice statements, the idea is that they're, they have multiple cases um, over one input, um, mutually exclusive cases, um, at least as, as far as the input is concerned. Of course, with, with fall through in a switch statement, the output could not be mutually exclusive. Um, and even when in a choice statement, if you have multiple cases in one, um, that wouldn't be mutually exclusive on the output. But so on the input, the idea is that you have mutually exclusive cases. So like, um, of course, enumerations are the classic example. Um, you know, you have some type of enumeration of say the days of the week, and then you have, um, say, a choice statement that you choose the, the cases for each day of the week, and you do something different. Um, that's one example 
uh, of course, for that specifically, um, if you do something like, you know, just uh, populate a value, uh, like populating a pointer, uh, that would be, <laughs> of course, uh, much easier with uh, some type of just array. Um, but when you deal with actually uh, having to do different control flow on those, that's where uh, switch and choice statements would really uh, come in useful. So the idea is that um, you would have mutually exclusive cases, which is different from if, else, if, else blocks. Because the cases could be about anything, of course. They're not strictly... Um, well, they're not restricted to be about, say, you know, a, a certain variable, like a... An, I don't know, an age variable that you then have cases on. Um, you can have anything in them. Uh, although the simplest example that, of course, shows the... Um, how switches slash choice statements relate to if else um, blocks. I'll say choice blocks, um, choice statements, because choice statements are more like if else blocks, um, because if else blocks don't have fall through. Um, uh, because if else blocks, of course, do um, you know a boolean value. So you have the two cases of a boolean value where. And when you deal with like a choice statement, you would have more cases. And I want to make the cases um, basically make the cases their own statements, just like an else block is its own statement. Um, uh, but of course, you're you're it's part of um, an if statement grammatically. Um, so that's the idea with how I I want to design the switch and choice statements um, to make them more like if else if else blocks and thus well a, one of those is give them, um, actually go to the, let's see, I, I am in the correct directory. Um, so one of these is, of course, um, uh, yeah, uh, makes, you, you have a nice visual and lingual separation of cases. Of course, if they are um, in block structure, essentially, um, is what I'm doing. You have a nice visual separation between the cases, because you'll have, um, I guess I'll just open a random buffer right now. Um, but basically you'd have, so like, I don't know, case, I guess, I, I haven't worked out the syntax exactly, but I guess I'll probably do something like this for a case. So it's similar to an else if uh, statement. Um, you know, proc. Um, now, the thing at this point, I'm not exactly sure how Basically, um, so for either switch or choice, I'm, I'm thinking of doing something like this, where the switch, so in other languages, the switch is a block unto itself, but in this I'm trying to make it more like an if, else if, else block for, of course, one of those reasons. Um, 
was to make it more uh, refract blech, refactorable between them uh, when you choose that you know you maybe you have a boolean value that you're choosing between in an if else block but then actually now you have more cases that you want to deal with it should be fairly straightforward to switch them um, between one or the other and that isn't really the case in say C because the switch is the block but uh, what you would need is that the cases are the blocks so in here I have the cases as the blocks but of course this switch has to be there so I think how I'm gonna deal with this is that I'm just going to have that the switch prepends the first case like this because I I don't think I want to have it that the switch is a block unto itself and then each case is a block unto themselves because then it's you have to have two layers of blocks just to do a switch or choice statement which seems a, a little bit ridiculous um, so I just think it's probably going to be that the switch or choice keyword is going to have and of course the whatever variable <laughs> you're testing um, is going to have to prepend the first case um, and then cases of course can come after um, and of course I can do foo in here or something um, and I can have another case and the reason I want the parentheses here um, is well obviously it makes it more like a if statement um, but also because you could have some type of uh, as of course in in y with um, constant expression collapsing um, which is basically if this is your first stream um, constant expression collapsing is basically uh, it fills the function of constant folding and arbitrary compile time execution um, so with that in mind I could have something like um, some type of constant in here or some type of const you know, constant expression um, so you know I could have um, 28 uh, divided by 2 I guess um, I mean obviously that you would see so maybe instead I'll have some type of um, procedure um, a factorial factorial is the example that I keep going back to um, but maybe I have factorial of 5 and then um, since factorial um, assuming that factorial is a static procedure then um, this is a constant expression uh, if factorial isn't a static procedure like maybe you're using um, I, I don't know memoization or something um, so if it isn't a static procedure then you would just of course use the concrete keyword uh, well the concrete hyper expression um, and um, well uh, actually uh, that's I have to think about how to do that because technically that would do the call at that would inline so I have to deal with that maybe I'll make a new keyword um, to specify that but eh. um, 
just for right now, I guess I'll put one times it. Um, but, uh, so I could, um, or actually I'll just do two times it and then divide by three. This is to make it look a little bit more like something you'd actually write. Um, <clears throat> so you could do this, and this, of course, would be a constant expression, and then that would be collapsed, and of course, the cases need to have um, uh, concrete values. Um, but then I could have another case in here, and be like a uh, bar, I guess. And, of course, if I, I wanted case 0 to fall through to, to case 5, um, but then I break, and then case, then this case, um, of course, you'd have bar. Uh, and the breaks, of course, um, are needed in the switch statement, but aren't needed in the choice statement, because essentially um, the choice statement is the same thing as the switch statement, but with breaks at the end of all of the switch cases. Um, but as it stands, I'm thinking I do want to have... Um, multiple values for cases. Um, because I don't want to have to deal with, like, if I want 5, 6, and 7, I want to be able to do something like this. Probably I'll, I'll just use commas here. Um, I might even use a different syntax. Maybe this will be... I might I might do this and have that as... <coughs> um, each of these. So 5, 6, and 7. But I might also have, say, like, case and use brackets. Um, or maybe, maybe to have them together, maybe I'll have them together, so I can do something like, um, I don't know, a hundred, and then this could be fifty to sixty. Maybe I'll do something like this, and so each... Each element can either be a value, an expression, um, of whatever type you're dealing with, of course, or um, an inclusive range. Hmm. So that might... That might make it so it's only only useful with um, natural numbers and integers, since we're dealing with... Uh, I can't use this syntax for dealing with real numbers. Um, although... Hmm... Mm, no, I mean, I think it still would be useful to have this for real numbers. But of course, the, the, the syntax that you would usually see it, you know, when you actually deal with um, subsets of the real numbers are technically this syntax. Um, this is actually syntax for the real numbers, but it would be, you know, not just the naturals of those, but um, you would have 
you know, inclusive is a bracket, and then uh, exclusive is a parenthesis. So you'd have 0 up to 10, but not including 10. And... Hmm... I'm not sure I can do this. I mean, perhaps I can. I mean, there there is the other thought that maybe I just add ranges to the the language itself, and then I can fit the syntax in somewhere. Uh, instead of having ranges as a library type. Um, eh, I, I guess I'll have to think about it. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, I do want to have some way of dealing with ranges in here. And then... So the thing about, of course, the default case is um, common in many languages. And for right now, I have a very rudimentary way to deal with the default case. Um, you'd have... Of course, a keyword default um, let's just say baz break or have it fall through whatever um, uh, VBA why not um, The thing is, at at this level, though, if it's just like this, there's not much in the way of checking. And this is the thing, this is extremely useful for enumerations, and I would love to have this for everything, um, or almost everything, I should, maybe, um, but have say, this also takes something. And this would be... This actually would be, no matter what... Um, no matter what you're dealing with, whether age here is, like, say, a natural number, um, or I have it as, like, a real number, or, you know, whatever... Uh, the default would be a natural number. You'd have a natural number to give it. And that would be the number of states that you did not account for in the cases. Because the idea there is that the, you know, the switch or choice statement should account for all of the cases. Um, ideally. And the way I'm thinking about doing that um, and still allowing a default case is um, to just say how many cases you didn't deal with, um, which is a pain, probably. Um, maybe. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> but it would make it easier to see if you, um, say, missed, a, you know, a case of an enumeration or a certain value, um, that you need to deal with in, I mean, obviously this is uh, pretty weird to have age as, uh, you know, part of control flow, but maybe it's, you know, you have to fill in certain forms based on the age of a child, um, you know, I, I don't know how most legal things are, but we'll just say it's something like that. Um, 
So, of course, in this case, well, the cases that I have covered, well, there's case 0, so that's 1, 5, 6, 7, that's 4, the next one is 5, and then 100 plus 11. Um, so that's what, uh, 17. Uh, so then you would have to say, in this case, it's like, um, you know, uh, a, a natural number. So it'd be like, we'll just say I have, uh, I probably should have these in the language at some point. Um, let's just say I have a max natural, uh, and we'll just say we can put in the age. So it takes the type of age and gets the max natural for that size, and then we subtract 17. Um, and then something like that. So it, um, so we can use that to, to determine, um, if you've covered every case that that um, value can take, which is why I'm thinking about having a an enum type again. I, um, I I've been back and forth on whether I should have an enum type. I, I definitely think I should, um, but the implementation would be that whatever enum you have, it inherits from the enum type. Um, and I was originally going to have it as, so like enum b, um, say it's a type like that, uh, and it would have, say, the, the number of bytes that it would need, and you would have the, the memory to store that, and so you could have enumerations that have, uh, you know, any number of bytes you need. But thinking about it like this, I think maybe the idea would instead be to have it the number of states it can take. So then maybe this default can be populated automatically um, for enumerations. Um, one moment. back. Ah, okay. So as I said before, um, well, technically, it would be, um, not populating the default. Um, you'd still have to populate that yourself. But you'd at least have a way to know the the number of states. Is for an enumeration, you might not take actually all the number of states that the memory um, can hold. Uh, you might use five states, but you still have, you know, a full byte. Um, but Um, as I was saying before, um, unfortunately, um, yeah, background noise. Um, so, uh, as such, I will have to be going at this point. <laughs> 